Let's get some perspective from our guest this morning. Andy Mantel is founder and managing director of Pacific Sun Investment Management. He's here, of course, with us in Hong Kong. Uh, China's move, I mean, it has to do with the weaker dollar as well as its need to diversify, correct? Correct. I, I think the uh, the holdings will, will increase further from China, of course, because they have to. The foreign reserves will increase going forward, so there's really the safe haven uh, feel for for putting more money in U.S. Treasuries. So I don't see any any big change going forward. Uh, but uh, you know, I think it's positive as far as what's going on. That's as far as China is concerned. How about the rest of uh, the Asian governments? Do you see them buying more into uh, U.S. Treasury? I do. I think the safe haven uh, will, will provide very stable returns for these investors that want to put money over there and elsewhere. But you know, where else can you really put it? Foreign reserves across Asia will will continue to increase. At least until China will will make a move on their their uh, their currency. Paul? Uh, Andy, uh, one uh, strategy which was proposed for China was to let their long-term <clears throat> debt expire and replace that with shorter-term debt, uh, so that uh, over time they can just let that expire and buy different stuff instead. What we actually saw in December was the uh, the shorter-term notes expired. They were replaced with longer-term debt, but at lower. Um, volume in total, lower, lower value. I mean, what would be a sensible strategy going forward? Well, I think nothing's really going to change. They're going to definitely put more, uh, you know, money in U.S. Treasuries. Try to do more in the short term, but you know, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Basically, they could buy gold as an alternative, of course, and there are signs that that has been happening. They have to put it in U.S. Treasuries. As far as the 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 the, the large size of the foreign reserves is just. You know, when you, when, you, when you get to $3 trillion, which you may in the next couple of years, you know, mm -hmm. you only could put money so many places. There's so. not enough gold in the world. They're going to have to buy. Exactly, right. exactly. Now, I want to touch on uh, China's economy. Inflation, of course, quite an issue uh, for the nation. It's been taking measures to put a lid on, on inflation. Right. More needs to be done. Does it need to be more aggressive than what it has already done? Well, I wasn't surprised they moved again to re to increase the reserve requirement ratio. There will be more moves as well, but it's not really aggressive tightening. It's more uh, to control the liquidity within China. I also see interest rates increasing in the second quarter, and uh, you know this is a good sign for for uh, for China. They're acting quickly as far as rolling out the stimulus package. They're acting quickly right now to tighten up. The, the monetary conditions within China. It's always adopted a loose monetary policy. That will persist? Well, do you see any tweaks anywhere along the way? Well, I mean, 7.5 trillion renminbi in loans this year is, is still going to be very active. It's the second year of the stimulus. Uh, they did reach almost 20 percent of this number in January and probably 15 percent in the first two weeks alone. So they did put, it, put a stop to it in the last two weeks of January. But I do see that the monetary conditions will be very loose in China this year. Uh, and therefore, there won't be any extreme tightening, but there will be some tightening. Uh, for ourselves, we are positioning ourselves uh, a bit conservative right now. Our net right now is probably at the lowest it has been. Um, you know, we're, we're doing quite well, actually, on both the long and short side. The, the property developers is an area that we had started to short perhaps two months ago. And if there is a bubble in China, it's probably in this area. Uh, major property developers in, 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 in major uh, cities in China. What kind of downside are you looking at for property stocks, for instance, going forward for the rest of the year? <clears throat> well, they've gone down probably 20 percent already. Um, I think on the short side, you're looking at short to midterm. China definitely is a you know, mid to long term story. Property developers, I believe, may go down another 20 percent uh, in the next six months, I'd say, because they had already gone down you know, a, a lot in the last uh, uh, two months. But uh, you are going to, you already see the, the measures taking effect in Shanghai and Beijing. The transactions in January were down about 50 percent month on month from, from December. Okay, Andy, we have to live it there. Andy Mantel here of Pacific Sun Investment Management. Thank you so much for that.